By any measure, music holds an importance to human culture equaling nothing on earth. An instrument with endless potential becomes a complete extension of the player's being and the composer's vision. Together as one, two remarkable artists are pushing the boundaries of classical music and our notion of the possible. What is special about an artist, you know, when I say to somebody it's an artist, it means that this person is capable to make magic. And what is magic? That to put people in an other state of mind and higher state of consciousness. The main thing is this humanity, you know, that they are speaking about archetypal human, human and emotional things. So that, that, this is very, very, very simple in a way. And the most complicated, because there is no more complicated thing than a feeling. Art changes you. It's designed to change you. The target is your imagination. The bond of two child prodigies, Vilmos Ola, a Hungarian-born violin virtuoso, and Eric Funk, a Montana-born composer, has resulted in a stunning collaboration. After discovering his ability to sound like an entire orchestra, Funk was inspired to create a new concerto especially for the unique virtuosity of Ola. Written on two separate staves, Vili, Concerto for the Violin Alone, Opus 109, is groundbreaking. He is the soloist and the orchestra. He faces a seemingly impossible task, navigating techniques considered theoretically possible, but most probably impossible. I want you to play a double stop unison, but what I'd like to get is some kind of glissando going in the opposite direction. If you have the double stop unison and you could slide your fingers toward each other, that it would be natural, but I'm wondering if, if the muscles work that way. So we may have to just simulate. And now I'm in the trouble. Now my question is, can this finger go this way and this finger go this way? Like, zert. But it's not Can they result. slide? But the result is... Ugly it's, interval. It's, it's not good. Ola must emulate flutes, oboes, clarinets. He must move his bow towards the bridge in the exact position to capture the crisp brass punch of a trumpet fanfare. And turn his bow for the sharp hits of timpani. It allows for endless individual expression, but its passion and beauty speaks to us all. Our responsibility as composers is to build new things, you know, not to just keep writing derivative works. I mean, there's no point in writing just another concerto. Clarinet, with a little ex cello rondo, solo violin, and then to French horn. This piece, it gives back some kind of hope for me. That kind of freshness is remaining as a main point of view of music in the near future and will bring back some kind of new aspects for the musicians and for the audience as well. Now go here. 
Our humanity depends on our ability to push boundaries and create innovative work. Concerto for the Violin Alone is a result of two artists from different worlds with the same voice. We've shared more notes than we have words, and yet our connection is deeper because of our musical connection. So he understands exactly what I'm saying and he knows how to say that. A portrait of Ola and his culture, composer Eric Funk's artistic expression is permeated with Eastern European influence. Rife with feeling and full of heart. His music reflects war and peace, work and struggle, knowledge and glory. It is a composition that requires courage, perseverance and phenomenal technical ability creating a vehicle where one man alone can stand as a collective. The implications are evocative. It's more than just a new piece, but a glimpse of what 21st century classical music might become. There's a, a whole different world, a whole different future of orchestral and chamber music and solo music ahead. The ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Experience this triumph of spirit made manifest in the violinist with his violin alone. Four years ago, I was here in Bozeman, minding my own business, taking care of business as usual, and everything was about to change. A group of members of the community and the university decided to present a symposium on the life and music of Felix Mendelssohn, composer. Toward that end, they hired concert violinist from Budapest, Hungary. Until that point, I had never heard of nor met Bilmos Ola. When he came to Bozeman, in addition to other things that he was doing, he presented a solo recital, which I attended. It was phenomenal. It was the most exciting thing I had ever heard. Afterwards, I approached him, I said, thank you, and followed with, I'd like to write a concerto for you, a very unusual concerto, a concerto for the violin alone, where you would be the soloist and the orchestra. He smiled, kind of delighted it looked to me, and I said, thank you, I'd like to see this piece. He returned to Hungary. A few days later, Vili was in Budapest, minding his own business, taking care of business, everything was about to change. An envelope arrived in the mail. Inside was a, a new concerto, three movements, 25 minutes long, written especially for him. As he opened the envelope and pulled the piece out, he saw the title, Vili, Concerto for the Violin Alone, Opus 109. It's all in the title, you see. Vili is a nickname for Vilmos. And it implies that this is a concerto that is a portrait, a sound sculpture of this man, of this beautiful artist, of this concert violinist, and also concert master of one of the world's greatest symphony orchestras. Concerto comes from a root that has its uh, derivation from concertare, which exists both in Italian and Latin. In Italian, it means to do battle. In Latin, it means to come together. The violin alone means he's all by himself, and by this I mean he has to do battle with and come together with himself. A couple of months later, I arrived in Budapest to work for two weeks, shoulder to shoulder, nine hours a day with Vili on the very complex process of breaking this piece apart. One of those days, we were working on a very, very tricky section that required him to move very quickly to a low note and return seamlessly. It seemed so impossible, I said, Vili, it's just not doable, let's just kill this note. He turned to me and he said, don't kill any notes, kill me. <laughs> Last March, I went to Budapest for the world premiere of the piece. This time, I took along a four-man camera crew from Montana PBS to document 
the event and also to shoot footage for the one hour documentary about our friendship and collaboration, which will be aired internationally this coming fall. Vili took the stage and played the piece from beginning to end. When he finished, the crowd went nuts, jumped to their feet. Then they stormed the stage. They wanted to look at the music to see how it was that he had achieved what he had just achieved. Since that time, Vili's played the piece a number of times and reports that every time he does, he is completely spent, having denuded himself and exposed the core of his being. They used to say that a human being could not run the mile in under four minutes. Then Britain's Roger Bannister broke that, followed by a number of other runners, and now routinely professional runners bust that edge. When Paganini wrote his capriccios for the violin, everybody said, these are unplayable. Now professional violinists have them as part of their standard repertoire, even using fragments of them as warm-ups for other concerts. Vili says in the film clip, this music gives me a new hope for music for the future. What he means is this, if one person can be the soloist and the orchestra, then the 96 musicians that comprise a symphony orchestra can do the same. That means we have 96 orchestras in the orchestra. Quietly, almost in complete secret, we just may have changed everything. Thank you. <laughs>